Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. poet says, a promise made is a debt to be paid. Therefore, with each promise we make, we mortgage the future. But unlike the future of the universe, which is infinite, the future of man is quite definite and limited. Therefore, we would do well not to pledge more than we own. After all, we cannot expect to live forever. Or can we? You see, you were awakened by this burglar? Yes, Lieutenant, and I can identify him. Well, it was dark. Yes. Well, you couldn't see his face. He was wearing a mask. Yes. You couldn't really get a very good look at him. That's right. Well, so how can you possibly identify him? There's something about him. I'd know him in a minute. <laughs> mystery drama, A Table for Two, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Larry Haynes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The French call it je ne sais quoi, and I myself don't know quite what it means, which is literally true, because that's exactly what it means. Have you got that? Anyhow, it's an indefinable something that enables a French restaurant to drape a few mushrooms around a hamburger and call it Buff Mince avec Champion au Beurre. Charge you 17 bucks for it and make you like it. Especially at the Café Tremblay, where the glacially cool Henri is the maitre d'. You know the type. Tall, suave, sophisticated. He can wither you with a frown or raise you to the heights with just a hint of a thin, wintry smile. Step this way, madame. Monsieur, your table is waiting. Oh, I am sorry, but without the reservation. This is the only available table, and if it is not satisfactory... Yes, Henri, the despot, the tyrant of the Café Tremblay. Why is it so important to merit his good opinion? Oh, well. Let us go home with a redoubtable, incomparable Henri. What have we here? Oh, you're home. Oh, I must fall asleep. Let me show off the TV. Helen, how could you sleep through all that noise? Oh, it gets to be boring after a while. I have nothing to do but watch TV all night. Okay, okay. No, Hank, it's not okay. Do you know what time it is? Yes, it's 3.30. Restaurant's been closed for almost four hours. Okay, Helen. No, that's not okay either. I'm sorry, dear. It's just that I, I... I know. No, you don't know. It's just that I have to unwind. Just go out with some of the guys. Well, and I, I understand. All we do is sit around, have a few drinks, chew the fat. You have to believe that. I believe it. Oh, come on, Helen. Hank, I want you to quit that job. It's bad for you. Bad for me. Do you know how much money I'm starting to make? Well, it's a phony, this Monsieur Henri. Well, you have to know how to run the front of a restaurant. There's nothing phony about it. But it's not you. You're not Henri de la Tour. You're Henry Smith. Oh, come on. And you're playing a game. You're, you're indulging a fantasy. Okay, okay. Maybe I should have gone back to college and gotten my engineering degree. Maybe. But the fact is, I... Don't know how to do anything. No, no, that's nonsense. I don't have a trade, a profession, so I do what I can. I'm lucky I can get a job doing this. No, you're not. You have to stop playing. Helen, I'm not playing. You're the kind of guy who, who needs to be doing something he believes in. You need an anchor so that the next time you get some harebrained proposition, you'll think twice. But because you'll have something to lose. Look, dear, it's late and I'm tired. And you don't want to talk about it. We'll talk about it as soon as we're a little bit more set financially. We'll really talk about it. I promise. Good, I'm 
me see if I have all this right. Your name is Patterson? Uh, pa Patterson with two T's. Margaret Patterson. And uh, Mrs. Neville K. Patterson. My husband is in London. And just a half hour ago... On business. You were awakened by the sound of a man. No, I wasn't awakened by the sound. He didn't make any sound at all. I wasn't really asleep. And... I became aware of someone in the room. Can you describe him? It was dark. He was wearing a mask. I was so frightened. Tall, short? I, I think he was slender. Dressed? Slacks, a uh, jacket, I, I don't know. Yeah, well, tell me exactly what happened. I became aware of him. I, I sat up in bed and I screamed. It wasn't really a scream, more of a, a, a gasp. He turned around. He had a gun in his hand. You sure it was a gun? Oh, yes. The moonlight coming in through the window, which shone on the, the, the you know, the, the barrel. Mm -hmm. And then? He pointed the gun at me. I thought I would die. He put a finger against his lips. He was warning me to keep still. And I did. Yes? Then he opened my jewel case. It was on my dresser, and... He took out my necklace, a brooch, and my diamond ring, and he placed them in his pocket. The next thing I know, he was out the window. What do you mean, out the window? You're 18 stories up from the ground. He just went out the window. What did you do? Me? Oh, I didn't do anything for I don't know how long. And then I started to scream, and... I kept screaming till my maid came into the room and and she called uh, you. Uh, he went out the window? That's a sheer drop to the ground. I saw him just go out the window. Now, these gems, do you generally keep them here in your apartment in a jewel box on your dress? No, I usually have them in the vault. Except tonight, I, I was at a formal dinner and I thought I would... Uh, do you mind if I use the telephone? No. I don't mind. Thank you. Is it possible he could have seen me and followed me home? I, I understand jewel thieves. Scout, is that the word? Places where wealthy people go. Uh, excuse me. This is Lieutenant Silverio. I'm at the Patterson place. Yeah. Oh, he got away with a few nice things. The M.O. fits our old friend, the cat burglar. Yeah, the one who can climb up and down the walls. Cat burglar? Yeah, Jerry. I think he can chalk up another one. Good morning. Oh, Helen. Helen, you don't have to wait up for me every night. Well, I have nothing else to do. Look, I'll make it my business to come home earlier from now on, okay? There's a, a letter for you. Oh, from who? State University. Well, why would they write me? Because... I asked them to. You asked them to? I said you'd left school about ten years ago and, and you needed something like 32 credits for an engineering degree. Now, Helen, Helen, if you have any ideas about my return... All to you school, have to do is, is go see the Deaton. They'll work out a program for you. Now, you have no right to interfere. I have every right. This is a decision I have to make. It's my life. If I'm going to stay married to you, it's my life, too. Now, wait a Wait a minute. What is this about staying married? I'm... I'm 32 years old, I can still have a good life. Uh, Helen. So far, it hasn't been a great one. I'll make it up to you. Oh, you get bored so quickly, and then you become restless. Helen, Helen, that's all in the past. You have to have a serious purpose to your life. Something that challenges you. I've been out of school too long. I didn't say it was going to be easy. Engineering is a full-time course. How will we pay the rent? I'll get a job. Oh, no, no, no. It isn't right for you to support me. Oh, who said so? Hank, you know, all you ever wanted to be was an engineer. Now, that's true, isn't it? Well... Now, you see, you really don't have any argument. What is there you can say that makes sense? Oh, come on, honey. Let's turn things around. Now, while there's still time. I'll think about it. Lieutenant Severio. Oh, yeah, yeah, Inspector. No, we don't have a thing. Nothing. That's right. The guy, whoever he is, just gets in and out of all these places. That's right. Like a cat. 
Here, sir. Just as soon as we get that first lead. Yeah. Excuse me, Lieutenant. Yeah? They said I'd find you in this office. Oh, yes, yes. It's uh, Mrs. The Patterson. Uh, with two things, yes. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I won't take up too much of your time. Well, I'm sorry I don't have any news for you. I didn't come here for that. No? I, I'm frightened. I'm afraid he'll come back. Why would he do that? To kill me. <laughs> if he wanted to kill you, Mrs. Patterson, he's had his chance. That's it. When he knew I was awake, he pointed the gun at me. Oh, that was just to intimidate you. He's a jewel thief. As a rule, they don't kill. As a rule. Anyhow, he decided not to. At that time. Suppose it occurs to him that I might identify him. But you said you couldn't. He was wearing a mask. But who knows what goes through the mind of a man like that. Tomorrow, next week, any time, he could decide something else. Lieutenant, I'm frightened. Oh, well, uh, I'll talk to the local precinct commander. We'll do the very best we can. Gloria, will you turn that thing down? What's the matter? I guy can't even hear him so thick. What do you want me to do? You're never taking to no places. Sit around here all day, all night. Just relax, will you? That's all I ever do. I work hard. I need my rest. What's the beef? I give you plenty of dough. You go shopping, go to the movies, museums. What would I do in a museum? Okay, Gloria, any time you think you can do better. No, Herbie, listen, honey. What I'm asking, just take me out sometime. Just a real fancy place. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about. Where I can wear my new dress and, and that makes gold. Uh-huh. Here, the society page. Look at these things. Everyone's a millionaire. Is anyone better looking than me? Can any of them wear clothes like me? Yes, uh, yes. Having dinner at the Cafe Tremblay. Mr. and Mrs. H.P. Powell III. Here, look. All these things. Not one of them can yeah, hold a Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pictured here with all we, the popular maitre d' is Mrs. Forrestal Timberlake. Look at her! Look! You won't believe it! Okay, oh, okay, look at it. You've never seen a hag like this in your entire life. Well? Hey, what are you staring at? Herbie? Well, what do you know about that? What do I know about what? Um, how would you like to put on that great gown of yours and make it? Do it all upright. What for? Mr. Herbie Lister shall escort Miss Gloria Hoover to dine this evening at the Café Tremblay. A Tremblay? Where do we come off the We've got the... the price. Do you realize you got to be somebody special to get in there? Oh, I'm somebody special. you got to make a reservation. You just don't waltz into a place like the Café Tremblay. Well, it's like you need a magic word to get in there. Yeah, that's right. And I know the magic word. Ah, good evening. Monsieur has a reservation? No, uh, monsieur does not have a reservation. Ah, oh, well, in that case, I'm so sorry, but we shall be unable to accommodate monsieur this evening. Uh, we Take that empty table over there. That okay with you, Gloria, honey? Uh, once again, I must explain to Monsieur that without the reservation. Monsieur, Henry, I got something that's even better than a reservation. Indeed. Yeah. A number. Uh number? That is, I used to have it. My number used to be 607-889. Yeah. 607-889. You should remember that number. It was one less than yours. Your number was 607-890. So, uh, how about that table for two, huh? This way, monsieur. manner of 
magic numbers are these that they can bring an aloof and autocratic head waiter to heel. Obviously, these gentlemen know each other, but what can they possibly have in common? Well, what all of us will have in common is the second act that is about to arrive here shortly. one word that can move mountains, tame tornadoes, reverse the course of the mightiest river. And what is that word? Well, it depends. It's whatever a particular situation requires. If you know the right word at the right time, you can have the world eating out of your hand. As a case in point, Herbie Lister knew the right word. So here he is, dining at the posh, ultra-exclusive Café Tremblay, and he didn't even have a reservation. Happy? How'd you do it? It's the good old confidence, baby. The good old confidence. What did you say to that... that stuck up head waiter? Honey, now that we're here, what would you like to eat? I can't read the menu. Everything's in French. Oh, I'll have my boy take care of everything. Your boy? Yeah, watch this. Garçon. Happy? Everybody's looking at you. Yeah, you're in the big leagues, baby. Oui, monsieur. Hey, what's good to eat, Miss Joyner? Uh, Paul, Etienne, Pierre, attendez. Shall you place yourself in my hands, monsieur? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that kind of puts things in balance, don't it? Uh, le jambon au cantaloupe, le veau, le salade, le petit glacé, uh, le vin, uh, le rochambeau blanc. Sounds fantastic. I know you will enjoy your dinner. <laughs> and uh, what comes after dinner? We'll enjoy that even more. See you later, Henry. I get it. Yeah? You know this guy. What makes you think so? You got something on him, too. Well, why do you say that? You're making him jump through a hoop. So why is he holding still for us? Some little girls ask too many questions. Yeah, midnight. You're yeah, right on time, eh? What do you have to drink? What do you want, Herbie? What do you want? Just like that. No hello, no house tricks. Is that the way to talk to a old buddy? We were never buddies. We were roommates for three years, eh? You mean cellmates. Well, you're doing good now. Yeah, I can see. All right, Herbie, what do you want? That dame used to come up to see you every Sunday. What, what, what was her name, Helen? We're married now. Oh, that's nice. What do you want, Herbie? What are you knocking down in that grease joint? Now, look, I don't have all night. Okay, okay. Average guy slips your fin. Now, you got him trained, so at least a sawback. But what's it add up to in the end of the year, huh? 20, 25? Okay, 30 grand. Now listen, Herbie, I don't... 40 grand? But you gotta pay taxes, Hank. Eh? Uncle knows you get big debts. All right, get to the point, if there is a point. You sure don't know how to talk to an old pal. Now, who are you kidding? We never even liked each other. Well, that's why we got along so good, Hank. Eh? I'm gonna give you a chance of a lifetime. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How'd you like to go into business with me? No, I don't think so. You don't even know what it is. It has to be crooked. Naturally. I need a partner. The answer is no. You know what I'm doing now? No, and I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Take a look at my latest press clipping. How do you like that, huh? Cat burglar. You? You're the cat burglar? Why are you telling me? I could tip off the cops. Oh, sure, but then I could let it be known that you used to have a number. 607-890. And then how many frogs' legs would you serve in that phony joint? <laughs> okay, okay, Herbie, what do you want? I almost blew my last job. A rich old dame named Patterson. I got inside, and there she is lying in bed. Now, that ain't supposed to happen to me. I never want nobody to be home where I'm working. Sure, I'm wearing a mask, but just the same, you never can tell. I couldn't care less about all this. Shut up. 
If I keep getting spotted, the cops will put together a little from this one, a little from that one. I need insurance. I want to buy some from you. Me? I don't sell insurance. Well, now, look at it this way. The cream of the cream, the top of the crust, they go into your joint, right? Now, they can't be in two places at one time, can they? I, I don't know what you mean. All you gotta do is leave me know who's in the restaurant. You see what I mean? <sighs> yeah, I see what you mean. I take it from there. The answer's no. We start tomorrow night. The answer is no, not just because I don't want any part of it, but also because I'm quitting the job. Yeah? Why? I'm going back to school. Oh, you're a big boy now. Shouldn't you be through with school? Where do you come off making me a proposition like that? You're a crook. That's a lie. In your heart. I never stole a nickel. What were you doing in jail? I was going to put the money back. The just the accountants came a week early. <laughs> Tell it to the judge. You did. And he didn't buy it, did he? You know why? Because he could read character, just like I can. You're a crook. Now don't you say that. You should have seen how your eyes lit up just now when I was making you the proposition. I could hear the wheels whirling in your mind. You were thinking, what a cinch. What a way to make a fortune. Now get it straight, Herbie. I am not a crook. I made a mistake. The kind of mistake a guy makes who's weak and immature, naive. Oh, you're breaking my heart. And full restitution was made, finally. But none of that was taken into consideration, was it? You'll be paying for that mistake the rest of your life. You're an ex-con till the day you die. Grow up. Wise up. You're on my side of the fence. Whether you like it or not. No, I won't. I promised my wife I won't. You're too good to be true. You're turning me down, not because you really want to. Because you promised your wife. Now look, if I don't quit that job and go to school, she's going to leave me. You really want to go back to school, huh? That's right. Is it what you want to do or what she wants you to do? That's none of your business. Whose idea was it, huh? Okay, go ahead. Leave your wife call the shots for you for the rest of your life. <laughs> You're going back to school? You're going to crack the books? <laughs> When are you ever going to have a good time? Look, we have nothing more to talk about. But you got something to think about. Why don't I give you a call at the joint tomorrow night, eh? Hey? Le Café Tremblay, Henri speaking. Guess who this is? Well, you thought about it? Yeah, I guess you did. So tell me, who's in the joint that would be of interest to me tonight? Mrs. Perry Youngblood. Yeah? How long do you figure she'll be there? Two hours. <laughs> okay, partner. We're in business. Lieutenant Severio. Yes, Inspector. I'm working on the report right now. Mrs. Youngblood's apartment. No, we don't have the full list yet, but it's a big haul. Same M.O. We don't have a single lead. I think I'll have another cup of coffee, Helen. Would you like to have another cup of coffee? Okay. All right. Still sore at me, aren't you? What are you trying to do, break me down with the silent treatment? Two can play at that game, you know. I don't have to talk to you, either. I told you I don't want to go back to school. I'm too old. I don't have the patience to sit through those endless hours in the library and in the labs. Now, where's the guarantee I'll even get a job when I get out? Do you understand? I'm doing what I want to do. The latest news on the hour. It's 8 o'clock of this beautiful spring morning, but it was not a beautiful spring evening last night for Mrs. Althea Warburton. She came home from dining out to find her apartment ransacked. Valuable jewels were taken. The police there arrived. It's the work of the very daring and extremely busy cat burglar. Who he is and how he does it is anyone's guess. Why'd you turn it off? Don't you want to hear the news? I've already heard the news. The cat burglar strikes again. Oh, uh, yeah. He is kind of busy, huh? It's very interesting. Why? Well, what's very interesting? 
Well, this Mrs. Warburton? It said she was dining out. Did I hear that correctly? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I wonder. Had she been dining at the Café Tremblay last night? I'm sure you'd remember. Oh, uh, yes, matter of fact, she was. Strange. Last three burglaries. All the victims have been dining at the Café Tremblay. Is that so? It's quite a coincidence, don't you think? Oh, uh, now, now that you mention it, yes. On the other hand, it doesn't have to be a coincidence. What are you saying, Helen? What do you think I'm saying? It's a lovely little scheme. All those wealthy folk dine at the Café Tremblay. Suppose somebody who's working there can tip off the cat burglar. Do you follow me? Well, I, uh... The cat burglar now knows that the apartment of an extremely wealthy person will be empty. Oh. Makes sense, doesn't it? A peculiar, perverted kind of sense. But it seems to be working. How many people are employed at the cafe at night? Uh, about uh, 25. Well, one of them is the cat burglar's accomplice. Now, Helen. It's you, isn't it? Me? Well, how could you even think of things? Henry, tell me the truth. That's always a provoking question, because most of the time, most men don't know how to handle it. When a woman demands of a man that he tells her the truth, does she really mean it? Does she really want to hear it? It's like walking through a minefield, and that's what we'll have to do, figuratively speaking, of course, when I return with Act Three. speak truth not so much as I would, said the French philosopher, but as much as I dare, from which we must conclude that speaking the truth can be a hazardous business. How often is a man, and a woman too, placed in a position where the truth may be dangerous? A lie can be fatal, and silence is impossible. The truth, Henry. Tell me the truth. How could you accuse me? I remember that, that nasty little cellmate you had. I never want to talk about him. What was his name? Oh, yes. Uh, Herbie Lister. Helen, what is all this? He was in there for burglary, wasn't he? Herbie Lister and I couldn't stand each other. We hated each you other. You refused to answer my question. I did answer it. How? By evasion? I said, are you the cat burglar's accomplice? How can you ask me such a question? All right. I'll answer it for myself. Herbie Lister was a very clever burglar. Oh, no, he wasn't so clever. He was caught. Oh, everyone gets caught now and then or eventually. But he's out of jail. And like you, he's moved to another part of the country. You don't even know this for a fact. One of his victims, a Mrs. Patterson, described the cat burglar as small, thin, slight. Wasn't that Herbie? Tell him there are millions of men in this country who are small, thin, slight. It could even be a woman. Herbie somehow encounters you again. And an old prison relationship is renewed. I told you, we were never friends. I didn't say you I were. I keep telling you, we hated each other. Well, that's a relationship. Helen, please. How much money are you getting for your end of this? You know, you're being ridiculous. How much? I don't have to listen to any more of this crazy. How much? We, uh, we split. 60-40. You must have piled up quite an amount. None of it has been fenced yet. None of it has been fenced yet? <laughs> Listen to this conversation. This casual discussion of burglars and receivers of stolen goods. Helen, you don't. You have to understand. No, I don't. I'm leaving you, Henry. Oh, no, Helen. I'll go stay with my mother for a while. Please, listen to me. Then I'll get a job. At, I'll get a divorce. You can't leave me. I see it now. You always counted on me. You always felt you could do as you pleased because no matter how I felt about it, I, I wouldn't walk out on I'm you. We I'm weak, Helen. I'm no good. Oh, that line doesn't go anymore. My answer's supposed to be, no, darling, you can be strong. There's good in you. You love me, Helen. You can't deny that. Well, that's true. But I have to learn to go on without you. Now, what did I do in the first place? I, I, I used some company money. I could have paid it back, but they didn't let me. They wanted to make an example out of me. So now I'm a marked man for the rest of my life. Excuse me. 
I want to get my suitcase. Society did more than punish me. They used me as an object lesson. Well, society owes me something for that. Well, I won't want anything from you, Henry. You can keep the apartment and everything. Else. Helen, look, if I hadn't played ball with Herbie, he'd have tipped them off about my record. Old man Tremblay would have thrown me out of my ear. Now, you've got to listen to I've it. listened to you for 12 years. And now when I add it up, I see it just doesn't make any sense. Now, Helen, please, we can't break up. Tell, just tell me what I can do. That's what's been wrong. I'm the one who tells you. Well, you tell me. You tell me what you can do. Well, I'll, uh, I'll quit. Yes? I'll, I'll, I'll quit the job. I'll go to school. And what else? What, what else do I have to do? You know what you have to do, Henry. Oh, no, 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 I can't. I can't do that. I'm not a stool pigeon. I'm not a rat. Putting a criminal back behind bars makes you a rat, does it? Helen, you don't understand. There's a certain code. A code is for decent, law-abiding citizens. What does it have to do with criminals? All right, look, I'll fight my way back. I mean it. It can be long and hard. But let me do one thing at a time. Yes? First, I won't touch a penny of that money. And second, I'll quit the cafe. And third... I'll go back to school. And fourth, it's just as important, Henry. Darling, I spent three years in jail. There were things that became a part of me, ideas, attitudes. Please, Helen, give me a chance. I'll work up to it. I, I just can't do everything at once. Help me, darling. This time, I'm going to make it. I know I will. <laughs> That's it, Herbie. My mind is made up. I'm quitting. I think we need another drink around here. Bartender, same way. No, none for me. I'm leaving. You think you're going to quit, huh? I don't think. I know I'm going to quit. Yeah? Well, now, <clears throat> how can I explain this to you? Explain what? Explain that nobody quits the organization. What organization? What do you mean, what organization? How many do you think there are? The organization. I'm not a member of any organization. Oh, that's what you think. How do you suppose I operate in this town? You think I just come into a place and start to steal without so much as a buy your leave? This territory belongs to somebody. You have to ask for permission and pay for it. Now, none of this is any concern of mine. Oh, it is. The organization likes the way I operate. And you're a part of that way. This is a free country, and I have a right to do it. You're whatever. talking like a chump. If you quit working at the cafe, I'm telling you right now, the organization isn't going to like it. Oh, yeah? Well, what are they going to do to me? Well, maybe nothing. So? But they might do something to somebody else. To somebody who's close to you. Patterson, your table awaits. Henri, uh, I would like to ask you something. The last time I was in here, it must have been three weeks ago. Yes, and I am desolated that you have neglected us for such a long time. It is too cool of you, madame. I remember it was a week after that, that robbery. Ah, yes, so unfortunate. I noticed a man came in that night. He had a young lady with him. Well, I wouldn't exactly call her a lady pretty, but in a rather common way. Do you know who he is? Ah, I am afraid not, madame. I do. I think he's the cat burglar. Ah, you are... You are positive? I saw him, you know. He was wearing a mask, but this one had that same thin, nervous appearance. Ah, madame, that uh, might describe a million men. That night, he looked at me in my bedroom and he said, Shh! And it was the way he brought his finger to his lips, that, that quick motion. I know it anywhere. Oui, oui, madame, but uh, so many people come in here, you know. Oh, I was afraid of and, that. Uh, besides, why would a person of that nature come to a place like this? A med 
madame, monsieur, please enjoy your dinner. Uh, Helen. What a handsome, dashing figure. Uh, come into my office where we can talk. We have nothing to talk about. I'm on my way to the airport, or I will be. There's a plane to Philadelphia. It leaves at 1 a.m. Do you want to come with me? Helen, I want to come with you more than anything else in the world. Then do it. Don't think about it. Don't make plans. Just do it. Helen, there, there's something... Meet me at the airport in time to make the 1 o'clock. Oh, forget about everything. H Helen. H oh. Uh, uh, good evening. Does uh, monsieur have a... Reservation? No, but I got a badge. Lieutenant Silverio. Oh? Now, Mrs. Patterson has been in to see me. It's about the cat burglar. Ah, oui. Four weeks ago, her place was hit. About three weeks ago, she says she was in here and saw a man who reminded her of the cat burglar. A thin, nervous type with a very brassy blonde. Didn't look like any one of the regulars here. Ah, well, monsieur, why uh, would I remember him? For that very reason, he'd be so out of place. Uh, a thin, nervous man eh, with a blonde companion. Uh, no, Lieutenant, I uh, do not recall this person. Well, you think very hard. If anything occurs to you, give me a call at headquarters. Here's my card. <laughs> Well, look who's here. <laughs> so, kid, what's on your mind? Let's go, Herbie. What? Where? Downtown. What's downtown? The police station. What's doing at the police station? We're going to give ourselves up. Well, I hadn't planned on that. It's all over, Herbie. I thought about it. I've had enough. Yeah. I've been a fool all my life. Oh, I'll buy that. And it's time I changed. What's this about uh, the leopard? They can't change his spots. I don't have spots, Herbie. I have a mind. And it's been all twisted and confused. But I'm all straightened out now. I know what I want out of life, and I'm not afraid to work. I'm not afraid of anything or anybody, and I don't have... I don't have to play the big shot. I don't have to have a lot of money, so we're going to go downtown, and we're going to end it. You go to jail, too. All right. It's another couple of years, but at least I'll have something to look forward to when I get out. What makes you think I'll go downtown with you? This. Oh. <laughs> you went out and got yourself a little pea shooter, huh? Yes, and it can, it, it can do what it has to. The organization isn't going like this. Is there really an organization, Herbie, or was that a little propaganda on your part? Uh, maybe it was a little bit of both. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you, Hank. Eh? So, let's move. Sure. Just open the door. We'll go to my car. You drive. Go ahead. Open the door. Yeah. Okay. Oh. 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 Uh, you just lay there for a minute, kid. You'll be okay. As soon as you get your breath. Oh, you. You've got a lot to learn. Oh. Never take your eye off a guy's head. Now, I got the gun. See what happens? I think I'll stash some of the loot over at your house and tip off the cops. Guess who the cat burglar is, huh? You. Me? Why not? The last three robberies happened when people were eating dinner at the cafe. The cops will find you got a record. It has to be you. Oh, now, there's a description of the cat burglar. He's slender, nervous. So couldn't that be you, too, huh? Uh, the cops will eat this with a spoon. What a spot you had to operate from. I'll tell them about you. You have a record as a burglar. I can prove you were in town. You won't be able to. You know why? You're gonna be dead. Now, you won't get away with it. Who says I won't get away with it? I say you won't get away with it. What? If you want to shoot it out, there's a cop at the window and a couple of more behind me. So it's entirely up to you, Herbie. Why... Why should I want to shoot? Hey, take it. Fred, you bring Herbie downtown in your car. I'll escort Henry here. So long, chump. You, you, you were always lucky. Yeah, lucky. Uh, it could have been worse. What's going to happen to me, Lieutenant? Well, a lot of extenuating circumstances. It won't be too bad. 
Besides, you were going to bring him in. I don't understand. Why didn't you just call up on the phone? I don't know. I guess I figured it would make me look like a squealer. Yeah. Um, well, I hope you're free of all that kind of nonsense now. Oh, yes, yes, Lieutenant. Well, Monsieur Henri, we have to get moving. Uh, tell me, how did you happen to be here, Lieutenant? <laughs> When I spoke to you about a possible suspect, you said you didn't know who the guy was. Well, how could you not know who he was? He had to make a reservation to get into the joint, didn't he? So you were lying. And worth keeping track of. I see. Uh, could you do me a favor, Lieutenant? Yeah? On the way, could we uh, stop at the airport for a minute? I have to say something to somebody. Yeah, we could. And, uh, Monsieur Henri, if you will step this way, I have a reservation for you. recommended, as they say in the advertisements, and why not? When you stop to think about it, what is life itself, if not a series of reservations? Every plan we make is a reservation for the future. And like most reservations, ours can be canceled without notice. We, however, can safely make a reservation to meet here again in just a few minutes. say about the je ne sais quoi at the very beginning of our story? Well, whatever it is, it's perhaps the most important thing in a world that is obsessed with style rather than substance. It's not who you are, but who people think you are that makes all the difference. And after a while, people are so concerned with the image, they lose sight of all reality. Our cast included Larry Haynes, Ann Williams, Court Benson, and Catherine Byers. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater.